Most students start off the term with great intentions and a strong motivation to succeed. However, this natural motivation for success is unreliable. In fact, for many students, they find that it starts to fade around midterms. The month of February is another common time for this dip in natural motivation. And surprisingly, second year and the year before graduation also tend to be periods of low motivation for students. What this means for students is they need to find some kind of way to artificially motivate themselves, to keep themselves on track. This is what I call tactical motivation. The first principle of tactical motivation is to not get caught in the feeling trap. You can wait a long, long time before you feel like studying. So don't wait. Focus on your actions. Actions are under your conscious control. Feelings are not. The second principle of tactical motivation is to select some strategies or tools to help you keep motivated. Although this won't replace willpower or effort, it will make it a lot easier for yourself. Here are three basic tools that you might try. First of all, tap into your natural motivation. Second, develop some artificial reward systems for yourself. And third, create some habits or routines. The first strategy is to try to maximize your natural motivation. Even though you don't need to do this to be successful, it can sure help. This means selecting a program and a set of courses that are interesting to you. The second strategy is to develop some kind of reward system for yourself. You may have found other students use food, TV watching, napping, or games to help reward studying. If those work for you, by all means use them. However, I want to share with you a particular strategy that's very effective, inexhaustible, and non-fattening. And that's the reward of self-encouragement. This is a very powerful reward for students. Most students are unnecessarily hard on themselves. They believe that curses and imagined fears will help motivate them to study. But this actually punishes the studying behavior and it doesn't reinforce it. Self-encouragement is very powerful and it's positive. Finally, creating habits is a powerful way to help yourself stay motivated. A habit is anything that is so automated that it just happens. For example, getting to campus in the morning is probably an automated behavior for you. You just walk out of your door, you turn left here, you turn right there, and you end up on campus. Sometimes even when you didn't want to come here and you were trying to get somewhere else. That's how powerful a habit is. Wouldn't it be nice if studying was the same way? In order to help automate these behaviors, you might want to set up some routines for yourself. Of course, time management is going to be very useful here, and I encourage you to take a look at the workshop on time management. However, I also want to talk about your study space. Many students find it helpful to have only two or three study spaces across campus and at home, and they only study there. If you start to mix and match, if you start putting other things into the study space, it will contaminate it for you and it will be harder to study. For example, many students have found that if they start to sleep in the study carols in the library, every time they sit down in one of those carols, they feel like they want to take a nap. This isn't helping them study. You don't want to make this hard on yourself. I hope these suggestions help. Keep in mind, it's not all drudgery. You may in fact find yourself slipping into a state that psychologists have called flow. This is where time flies, you get loads of work done, and it's almost no effort and no pain to get it done. If you use these strategies, you'll find that the flow states will be more likely to happen.